Carol, Benjamin, and Esther Levine. So, how old are you, Jay? I'm 86 years old. And are you you're the youngest in the family? I'm the youngest, yes. My you're oldest brother was 25 years old than I. Wow. That was my brother, Herman. So how, so, how many kids in the family? There were 10. So what's it like to be the youngest of 10? It's great. Yeah. Living with a great family. Uh -huh. And uh, when my mother died, I was 8 years old, and I went to live with my brother, Herman. And I missed my other brothers and sisters. So you, your brother, Herman, raised you? No, well, my brother Herman, I lived with my brother Herman for three and a half years until uh, I was ready to come back to be bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And my father taught me to be bar mitzvah, and I learned my mafter and brachas from my father. And I had a very big bar mitzvah where they threw peanuts from the balcony, <laughs> and we had a piece of herring and careful. Where did you live? I lived at 218 Burnett Street, New Brunswick. So what, what was it like to be the baby of such a big family? I mean, this, we, I mean I've always heard that big families like that, you know, the babies are spoiled. Are spoiled? No, I, no. no, no. I was never spoiled because they never paid that much attention they to didn't, me. They didn't, huh? They didn't baby uh -huh. me. I was on my own. I had a newspaper route uh -huh. at the age of 11, or 12, at Albany and George Street, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, when it was on a Saturday night that I was through selling my Sunday newspapers. And I walked down on Burner Street and I saw a crowd of people in front of my house. And that was the day my mother passed away. Huh. And you were 11? I was, no, I was 8. You were 8? Oh, okay. oh, 8 years old. Oh, no, no, it was the did What did your mother die from? Sugar diabetes. Uh -huh. How old was she when? 49. Huh? Yeah. So did your life change much after that? Yes, I believe it did. I believe, I, I, I believe that with my mother being alive, I think I would have had a little different life than what I had. Uh -huh. Being sent to my brother Herman, right. I, was, I was treated very nicely. And yeah. I, I was uh, taught the right manners. But my sister-in-law, Pearl, was a very, very strict kind of a person. Did your brother Herman have kids of his own Yes, he had, at that time. He had uh, four daughters. Where, how were you? Were they all younger than you? Uh, Helen Eve was, I believe, five years younger than I. But she was the oldest? Yeah, she was the oldest. Then came Ruthie, and then came Esteban, and then came Lady. They were all good kids, and I loved them. Did you babysit for them? Not very often. No, they were old enough to take care of themselves. And they were brought up to, to take care uh -huh. of themselves. So when, when did you first, what's your first memory of a family picnic, a Dean family picnic? Johnson Park. Is that the first one? Yes. What year was it? I believe it was 1960, uh, 1942 or 3. During the war. That's right. What was it like? Oh, it was great. I was the chef. Uh -huh. My brother Irving was my assistant. <laughs> and uh, we had a wonderful family reunion. You were, what, you were in your... In your 20s then? Well, uh, yeah, but uh, no, I was younger than that. What year were you born? I was born in 1917. Oh, no, you were 25. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Huh. My dear wife, that was her first picnic with me. Yeah? Yes, back. Uh huh. Yeah, it's all wet, right? Huh. And, 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 and how have the picnics changed over the years? Well, they just got bigger and bigger and better. Yeah. More family, more children. Uh -huh. Which where the Bean family was always known for. Uh -huh. More children. Uh -huh. That's right. And this is the first picnic you've been to in a few years? Eleven years. You haven't been to one in eleven years? Eleven years, yeah. Uh -huh. We were supposed to come last year with my dear wife. Canceled out. When did she die? November 23rd. 202. Mm. Were you with her? Yeah. My whole family was with her. Bruce and, <laughs> and Abby were there.
What's it like coping living without her? Not good. I never thought I could do without her, but you make the best of it. She's a great gal. We married for 62 years and we went together for five. No such thing as when. It's mm -hmm. always. She's always with me. You're always talking to me? Always. Yeah. You live with a woman like her for 62 years, you you know you're gonna miss her because she was a great guy. Everybody loved her. She never had an enemy. Nobody. Nobody. And wherever she is, God makes you best for peace. Sounds like part of her is with you. Yeah. <laughs> My kids are very good to me, thank God. They call me, Bruce calls me every morning, uh -huh. five minutes to eight. Abby calls me at least three, four times a week. Mm -hmm. My grandchildren are wonderful. They call me. They're all good to me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's the way life is. So where did you grow up? I grew up in New Brunswick. So you were? I was a New Brunswick native. <coughs> So you were? I graduated in a bunch of college. So you grew up with 8,000 cousins? Well, we had a big family. Yeah. My father had uh, two brothers and three, uh, one, two, three, three sisters. And uh, the only one that didn't live around New Jersey was Jenny. Mm -hmm. She lived in Durham, North Carolina. Yeah. And, but uh, Aunt Ida, Aunt Rosie, Uncle Max, and Uncle Abram, they all lived around the country. And all their children, and cousins. And then my mother had a, a sister by the name of uh, Tante Rachel, who had uh, one, two, three, four children who lived around the country. And she also had a, a brother by the name of Belva, who lived in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. They were all come to visit us. Very close. Now they're, they're all Russian Jews? They were all Polish. Polish. My father was born in uh, Balkovisk, uh -huh. and my mother was born in Grubna, uh -huh. which was part of Poland at that time. Uh -huh. and my grandfather, Wolf, came to New Brunswick in 1900 and, uh, 1800 and uh, 74 or 73. Well, you know much about what he did? My, yeah, did my grandpa had a grocery store. Uh -huh. My grandmother, Prova. And I used to go to help her as a kid. <clears throat> she used to give me a little snolly uh -huh. for, for lunch. And, uh, always gave me a penny for, for a piece of cake. Hmm. What did the store look like? What did the store was a little grocery store with uh, boxed uh, in a window was a box of prunes, a box of raisins, a box of apricots. Mm. And uh, instead of having a package, they used to have a little shovel, and yep. weighed, everything was weighed. And coffee and butter was in the big tubs. Yeah. They used to take a scoop, a pound of butter and scoop it in a paper dish. And that's the way life was. Did they have pickle barrel? Oh yeah, pickles, herring barrels. Yeah. And, uh, Sauerkraut barrels and uh, there was one other barrel, I forget what that was. Pickles were there, the sauerkraut was there, herring was there. There was one other barrel which I don't remember. Mm -hmm. It was some kind of a mixture yeah. <coughs> of uh, merchandise. Mm -hmm. But my grandfather had a very nice store on Hyam Street. And right down the street, there was an uncle of mine, mm -hmm. that was Uncle Muffle, who was his brother of my mother, right. at another grocery store. And I used to help him, yeah. with Tante Leche. Yeah. They were very good to us. All our family, after my mother passed away, 
They always were good. I know my Aunt Ruffalo used to go to her store and eat and help her. She was very good. Did you go into the grocery business yourself? Uh, I'm in a liquor business. Ah. Uh -huh. Blackstaff. Blackstaff Foods. Food. They were a grocery department, but a grocery wholesaler, but I was in the liquor end of it. I was a salesman. Mm. Where was that? Fred Airborne, New Jersey. Uh -huh. when, when did you go into that business? 1934. Yeah. He retired in 19, uh, 1994. 60 years. Wow. 60 years doing sales. Huh? 60 years. And they gave me a testimony of dinner, uh -huh. which 130 people attended. Uh -huh. what a beautiful thing. And Bruce and, uh, and uh, Becky were there. And my dear wife was there. Mm -hmm. And we had a. a uh, be a uh, recording of all the happenings. When, um, where was that in New Jersey? With the dinner? The dinner. Was that fantasious. No one better at Snuffy's in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Uh -huh. Eric Perlman, who was chairman of the board of the company, yeah. was a Toastmaster. Uh -huh. Someday when you come to my home, I'll let you see it. Uh -huh. and I got a wristwatch, a very nice gold wristwatch. It's set on the back of it. Built within the legend of the industry <laughs> for 60 years. That nice. business changed a lot in 60 years. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. In the first days, four, well, beer, beer came only in the you know? Beer came first. Yeah. Beer came first. Then out. It was a 3 2 beer. That yes, came that, that was. That was that was it was the, after Prohibition. Oh, no, was end of was At the end of Prohibition, mm -hmm. it was 3-2 beer, and then a month later, President Roosevelt signed in the Liquor Act. Right. And uh, that was the beginning of the whiskey beer. But, so the, the beer was only in cakes? No, that it was, was a bottle? bottles. Yeah. It was a 3-2. Uh -huh. It was a very weak beer. And when, when Prohibition ended, then they went to full beer. And anheuser Bush. In those days, Tromers, uh, P.O.N., uh, Valentine, Blue Ribbon, mm -hmm. Hoffman, there were a lot of beers that they are non-existent. Yeah. The only one left out of that whole group was the Amheiser Bush. And a lot of imported beer. Oh, yeah. The only imported beer at that time was Heineken. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're ready. All right, let's let's start everybody introducing themselves, and everybody gives their birthday if they can remember. I am smiling. I was going to give it a ready. Yeah. Okay, I'm Helen. One more. One Helen more. Helen Eve. That's how the family knows me. I was born June 3rd, 1922. I'm the oldest one here. I was born 19 October 4th, 1970. Nope. I was born May 26, 1970. Ed Fritz, maiden name Annette Levine, May 30th, Did y'all meet each other? How did you know that? Let's see, I'm going to be 86. I was ten, eight years old. Eight years old. Yeah. I met that. She fell in love with me. No, I didn't. <laughs> she, she used to carry my books to school. You see, that's, they told him to tell the truth. <laughs> Amy, I remember you when you were. What's the other story, Edie? King of Dresses. And you took my school, my books. You said, "No, nope, let me carry them." Oh, sure. So you had all the competition. <laughs> Helen, what was it like when Milton moved into your house? When Not you... easy. How old were you? <laughs> well, there seems to be some disagreement. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He said he moved in 
right after Grandma died. Right? 1927. Yeah, I was 10. Huh? I was, I was five. Back then. Um, I grew up in a family of girls, so you know, they have this strange creature in the middle of the house. Somebody um, with a penis, yeah. I, I don't even know What's about that. I couldn't hear it. I, listen, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. My sister of Pearl, may she rest in years, was a wonderful girl, but she was so tough on me. You had no idea. I had wings down. He was always locked in the barn. Yeah. And locked in the bar. Upstairs, sure. Yeah. That's because I knocked the tree off. <laughs> we had a great, uh, that story, story nobody is permitted to forget. We had a great big oak tree right in front of the house. And I don't know whether Milton was angry at my mother. Oh, exactly. Yeah. He stood yeah. next to the tree, and I don't know what kind of an implement he had, but he, he took the bark off a piece of the tree, which was about. I don't know, at least four feet high and maybe two feet wide. Oh, sure, that's right. It's still there today. <laughs> Every time I come to Ellenville, I look at that tree. <laughs> anyway, that was something we won't ever forget. The other thing we won't forget is one Fourth of July, I think it was Fourth of July, the only fireworks we were permitted to have were, were sparklers. And he threw one and caught my sister Ruthie in the eye. That's right. That's another thing. That's right. Right up here. I don't know. What, besides my mother, what do you remember? What do I remember? <laughs> you know, what I remember, I never saw such a big bathroom in my life. Uh, we lived in an old house, and I think originally that house had a bathroom only on the first floor. So this was in Ellen. I know, but I That's think that was put in afterwards. It was a bedroom that was converted to a bathroom. So it was tremendous. It must have been My bedroom was above the kitchen. And I used to go through the side door downstairs <laughs> and open up in the kitchen. And later, the on, later on, they moved me out of there. Do you know why? No. When Pauline came to live. Oh, Pauline Ray. Right. See? Am I right or wrong? Well, I know that she came to live with us. She came to live with us and they moved me out. Terrible. What? <laughs> the first time I went there, I would have put a pass <laughs> just before we got with married. Somebody. I remember that. And I had You're not going to answer that. When I walked in that room, I said, never in my life saw such a big bathroom. Why don't you tell, yeah, tell us, tell tell us, tell us a story, and Annette, about... Every morning, I had to go from the house up to the overlook. Drucker's. Drucker. Drucker's. Drucker's up in the mountains, right? Not Walking in the up. mountains, it was out of town. It was out of town, it was on the highway. Well, that's not the mountain. And then when I got back home, <laughs> Helen Eve had a, a romance going with a doctor or a dentist, Dr. Dool Dooley. He used to call you every morning. Remember? Don't you remember that? He used to call you in the morning? If you don't remember, remember that. Helen Eve, he used to, every morning, he lifted up the street. The, the Dr. Dooley. No, Bloomberg. No, 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 no. Jackie Bloomberg. No, no, Bloomberg, I'm very not my No, I'm trying to look. <laughs> Dr. Dooley. Don't remember. I can't remember. Well, you're a little older than that. It's been a few years. Did you have a story in that that you wanted to tell? Does she have stories. <laughs> Whatever she'll tell you, he'll say it to me. All right, well, he'll get his chance. You only tell you stories about No, it's in there. No, and that's turn. <laughs> what shall I tell you? Tell him whatever you want. How you came up there and you worked in Ross Cross Department Store. Oh, yeah. After my mom died in the summertime, I lived here. I used to go to Ellenville. I was quite young at the time. But two years later, I worked in a department store. Remember that, Ellen? Remember Harold, the redhead? What was the redhead's Red. name? One of them became a doctor. They, uh, yes. One's a pharmacist. Harold. Harold. Harold is a pharmacist and a rusty redhead. The redhead became a doctor. Right. Right. What about him? Why do you remember him? Because I went out with him. Oh. My brother Herman had a friend, Cooperman. Had a, uh, he was a lawyer. 
Yeah, but we used to go to his place. Up on the... On the on the way to Kingston. Yeah, yeah. up in the... Had a pool, a swimming pool. There was a lake, a mud bottom lake. Oh, hey, 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 wasn't there a friend of, lake. Wasn't there a friend of Herman's that had a, a pool on the way to Kingston? The Hex, Dr. Hex. That's right, Dr. Hex. Am I right or wrong? I had a You're pool. You're right. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Give me five. Come on, Ben. Benny, give me five. Benji. So Uncle Milton tell him why you used to crawl through my mother's bedroom window. What's that there? You used to crawl through my well, mother's bedroom window. My you, brother, you, yeah, every brother time he got locked out every of the time, house. Every time my brother Jerry, see there was a there was three floors in the house. The top floor was the attic where they had a wooden window and they used to have a lock on it. And every time my brother Jerry would get angry at me, he would lock that door. And he would lock the front door because he wanted my father to know what time I was coming home. So the only way I could get in was to climb to Edie's bedroom. bedroom. But I would, I went right through. I would know. <laughs> no, no, he no. would go up the front steps, in through the kitchen, to my bedroom. You didn't stop to visit. Open up the asleep. window, and I said, "Okay, Milk, get she out sound, of here." She was sound asleep. <laughs> she was sound asleep. I had to tell the truth. How old were you then? Okay, I was about 15, 16. And what were you doing out? Like no. Bumming around. Yeah. around. No, no, no. And uh, I had to go no, no, no. and I locked this door. And my brother Jerry lived on it. He slept on his sleep. As soon as he heard that click, he would say to my father, Buffy is here. And my father would give me a slap. Boom. <laughs> and when Father Ned was late, he would lock the door. My father used to open up the window and he used to holler, I'm going to come sleep with Edie. i got to get up in the morning, early in the morning. I wasn't home by 9 o'clock. My father, at 9 o'clock, my father had a routine. He used to send the army out after him. We didn't have Everybody a ran after him. Uh -huh. yeah. Ice box. Yep. My father, at 9 o'clock, you could send your clock by that. He never looked to see if anybody was going past the door. He used to stand at the front of the door and pour the water across the sidewalk. You never knew that mother carried my books? <laughs> Let's see where, right in there. <laughs> It, it wait, wait, wait. So he'd throw the ice water over the sidewalk. Over the sidewalk. Yeah. And if I was out on a date at nine o'clock, the door was closed. And he used to say to me, "If you're not home by nine o'clock, you're not coming in." And so I used to bang on the door until Edie's father would say, "I gotta get up in the morning. Come <laughs> sleep with Edie." And besides that. There was a stoop there, two steps, where that hallway was. And we used to sit there, you know, till. But we knew at 9 o'clock, if we didn't get away from there, we were going to get a wet. shower. <laughs> we came 9 o'clock, we moved it out. And he never looked outside. You know why he they stood get in wet? there. She don't tell you why it get wet. We had an old icebox. Well, I just said that. Story. The water was underneath <laughs> Never. Everybody on the Jerry block. One time. Everybody in the I saw area him coming. Knew it. I saw him coming. I waited. I timed it. I saw the whole thing. Remember when we got the? You remember the? We had a four-line telephone. Uh huh. You know, in those days, you couldn't get a private phone. One, two, three, three J. That's right. And then we changed to eight, seven, six, three J. I was out of the house by then. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things I remember about. Well, those days on Burnett Street, and Aunt Bessie used to come with her car, and we always had to watch it. She had a big of sound. That's right. right. And all the kids who were there were, were charged with protecting her car. And you know why she came? Because Herman had visit, come to visit us. And Herman at that time was the sunny boy sunny. of the family. That's true. Everybody the only him. reason being that he didn't live close to you. <laughs> when Herman, no, no. no when oh, Sonny was Boy old, was coming, he was a Sonny Boy of the family. Boy. And when, every, when Herman came with the family, everybody came to visit him. Everybody. Why was he the Sonny Boy? Well, he was the oldest. 
And he was the and my oldest. father was very was, proud of him. And he was in you want to jump in proudest. and get any pictures? Why was he proud of him? Well, because he was the first Jewish boy that was, had a free scholarship to Rutgers uh, University. Uh, the first Jewish boy uh, to Madeline, Madeline would like to... Well, it's become pearls. My father said pearls. Okay. Right. 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 All right, the question we were last talking about was, if I remember it, why Herman was the darling of the family. He said he was the only Jewish boy to go to Rutgers. He was the oldest of all. Yeah. He was the first Jewish boy to got a free scholarship at Rutgers. And also the first Jewish boy to go to And he was the first Jewish boy in the city of Brunswick that enlisted in World War I. Uh -huh. And my father was very proud of him. And so was everybody else in the city of Brunswick. If you ever hear of his eulogy, which I have a copy of, you'll understand it. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved her. Mm -hmm. And my father was the proudest. When, her, when Herman's name was mentioned, his chest went out. Mm -hmm. When I, my name was mentioned, it went in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when, when Pop used to have the, before we had a shul? And Pop we had, had the services, had services in, our in, in synagogue my store. of our synagogue that were members of was held in uh, what Grandpa's year was that? store. I don't know the year. I can't, I can't get everybody. No, 1899. 1898. You know, I have. 1898. You know, since since I'm not biologically part of this family, I'm, and I, I have to keep remembering how you're all connected to each other. So I think it would, given that there are going to be people who watch this video who won't know exactly oh, how you're all interconnected. Why don't y'all? You know, Hang on. We'll, we'll change. Need a new battery. Can you change my battery? <laughs> <laughs> no, yours is not real. Right. All right, who's who? I mean, how are you? My father was the oldest of the original ten kids. And Aunt Edie was married to one of my father's brothers. And Milton was my father's youngest brother. And Annette was my father's youngest sister. Very good. Good. You can tell him who your father was. My father was Herman. Your father was Herman. Well, that's Herman's what he said. Yeah, that basically does. That's what he wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. Edie's oh. been in the family since she was five weeks old. <laughs> I, we, I moved next door when I was eight years old, so that's how long I've been. With our gang of dresses. With this family. I went out with him. I went out with... Madeline's father, and ended up with the best one in the family. They were all good. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them who it was. Louis. Absolutely. Uncle they Louis. were all good. We were all no, no, no. Uncle Louis was the favorite of the family. Well, you were the worst, right? I was the worst. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when he got in trouble in because high school, my father, everything was they gone say you have to bring your father to school. Everything was put into the other children. He wouldn't bring his father, so he brought my husband. Uh, his brother, Louis. He comes up to the principal with Louis, and just my father he says, "That is not that's your brother, Louis." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I asked Milton when we were talking to him separately whether because he was the youngest in this family of ten kids, being the the baby of the family, whether that informed his personality, and he absolutely denied it. He said that he was not treated like the baby of the family. That's right. Is that, what do you all say to that? I was never treated like a baby. Well, he didn't have a, a long enough time to be uh -huh. the baby, because my grandmother died when he was still fairly young, yeah. so he went to yeah, he was a post. I had a newspaper route at yeah. eight years well, old. You said that. I, my mother yeah. passed away, it was on a Saturday night. Yeah. Was I was 10. selling newspapers, yeah. Sunday, Daily Home, Sunday News, yeah. on the corner of Albany and George. Yeah. When I got through selling my hundred papers, I walked down Burnham Street and there was a mob in front of the house and somebody said that your mother passed away. And I walked in, my mother was in the back bedroom, yeah. covered up, and that was the beginning. How old were you when your mother died? Two years ago. Twelve. So you were twelve. Not quite. So was was, was well, you went your to mother New York. Didn't you go to New York she to live with Aunt Marion? No, first, no, first, first I went to Aunt Bessie. Aunt Bessie. After, after mm -hmm. my mother died, I lived She went to Aunt Bessie. Jerry went to Aunt Florence. 
uh, I went to Herman, and Louis was at that time with Aunt Bessie working for, uh, for right. Aunt yeah. Bessie. So. And in case anybody's interested, my father was a kosher butcher and used to get up at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. And when my time came for my mother, for me to be born, her grandfather had to take we'll my see. mother to the hospital, Harry. Harry, right. So, so when we worked for your, your mother... Well, he used to deliver. Used to, when your mother died, was that... When, you're, when you think back to your childhood, was that a huge demarcation? Is that what? A huge demarcation, a, a, a dividing point, a changing point yes. in of your child, your, your mother life. dying. When you think back, the I way things were of, before and after. I was taken out right. of the city of Brunswick and sent to Ellen, right. New York. How did it change your life? You know, I remember one thing. Did you all get farmed out? Yes. Yeah. 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 You got to remember, Bob. Jerry that, and Louis stayed with my father. Remember, I'm coming yeah. into Ellen, New York, living with. Right. The, my oldest brother and his wife right. and the children, my life had changed. Well, it I, sounds I was, like... I was there... never used to sitting down at a dinner with six, girl, uh, three girls and one, my brother, and knowing the manners that my sister-in-law used to teach me. The first thing she said to me, wings down. Remember that? Wings down and a fork. He was a fork with my... I used to eat, you know, every uh, one fork did everything. <laughs> <laughs> what, were there other? How many of how many kids were still at home when your mother died? Four. Four. And did you, you all got dispersed? No, no. the two no, oldest. Jerry and Louis Je stayed. Je no, no, no. Jerry went no, to we Harry. Didn't. Jerry, my Jerry went to live with Aunt Florence for a while, and Louis was with with uh, Bessie while he was working there. He was upstairs in that bedroom. The little bedroom up to the steps, and the only one was that there. That was in Westfield. And I was I was sent to Ellenville, and she was sent to my sister Beth. So you lived you lived in with this huge extended family in New Jersey, and your mother died, and then you were did you feel cast out? Yes. Yeah. Well, I I stayed I visited with not visit but I lived with Bessie for a while, and I didn't like Westfield. It was anti-Semitic. Uh huh. And one day I pick up a piece of paper and call and said, do not talk to her, that would mean she's a Jew. Mm. So I was very unhappy and I left and I went to live with my sister in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. my sister Marion. And I stayed there for a while and then my father wanted me back home. So I went back to New Jersey and I lived with Florence and Harry mm -hmm. for a very short time. And then I went back, my father wanted me home. So I went back and I lived with my father until I graduated high school in Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to my sister in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I lived with her and I met my husband while I was living with my sister. And he got married. He was, my husband was Herbert. Mm -hmm. And he, he got married in Brooklyn in Rabbi's study. Christmas Day. You remember that wedding? Right after the wedding, my brother. What year was that? Did you marry? 1935. Mm -hmm. Christmas and Day. Mm -hmm. And so you were about how old? 12, Helen? Yeah. yeah. And right after the ceremony, my brother Herman and Pearl and the kids, we all went back in the car back to Ellenville, and I stayed at the Wayside Inn. there for a week and stayed through New Year's and then I we came back and we lived in 305 more 10th Street in Brooklyn and I stayed there for a year and then I moved near my sister Marion on Linden Boulevard and Linden Boulevard where's that? In Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Brooklyn yeah. and uh, 52nd Kenny, I became pregnant there, and I went back to New Brunswick and had Kenny at St. Peter's Hospital. Was it hard getting your husband to move to Jersey? No, he was a Jersey boy. Oh. He was from Trenton. Uh -huh. And his mother died when he was two years old. And so he was being raised with an Italian family. Yeah. And, uh, what was that family's name? I didn't remember. 
So how did you all end Friends, up back together speak. again as a family, you yeah. know, since you were uh, all he, so spread then he out? He went to live in Mount Vernon with his father. And his with Grandpa's mother. father? Pardon? With yeah. Grandpa's father? Yeah. And we went to live in Mount Vernon, New York. Not we, but uh, Grandpa did. And then he went to high school. Oh. Your My husband, Herbie, Uncle Herbie, oh, was Uncle her Herbie's grandpa. father, right. Robin, you know, we used to have, we, well, Antoinette moved back, back when, to Westfield when Uncle Herbie opened up his business. And I was married and we moved to Roselle and Uncle Bill was living in Plainfield. Yeah, well, so, well the other thing that happened was that there was always a family uh, Seder. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we came down from Ellenville for that and everybody... Where would that be? At Grandpa's house. At my father's house. house. We used to borrow the, what they call ponies. My father would get big boards, you know, that would have a U shape. And we'd have, we'd have a big Seder on there. Sword there. Sword yeah. 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 At one time, you, I, and Jerry were the only three living at the house. That's true. We went to high school together, do you remember that? Oh, do I remember okay. that? And, uh, you would that's think when you tell me I can't know me before, when you see me in the hall. When I came back, when I came <laughs> back. You know up to it that I was his sister. Yeah. Well, my brother did the same thing. I had thing. more trouble with my sister and my niece. May she rest in peace, Myra. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. They were in high school together, and they used to squeal on me. No matter what I did, my father knew about it. And whose about daughter was Myra? What? Whose daughter was Myra? Oh, my Jeff. brother Jeff. David, and, David. Well, what had happened? When I left Ellenville, New York, I came back and my father, I was 12 and a half years old. My father wanted me to be bar mitzvah group That was some bar mitzvah. And he <laughs> taught me my mopter and my brachas, and they made a big bar mitzvah for me. The women sat upstairs, and they gave them little brown bags with peanuts and yeah. raisins. And what else? And my sister said that my mother had made baked mandel bread. <laughs> 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I took yeah, it. Yeah, no, wait, let me tell I, the story. <laughs> and she said, you're going to have mandel bread at the bar mitzvah. At the bar mitzvah. So they put out in the back the of the shoes a big long table. All the stale they put out, they put doesn't, out, get, doesn't get better this, with age? This, they put out this two piece of I don't know how many teeth got broken. Piece of cake, <laughs> and this, this mandel <laughs> which nobody could eat at that time. <laughs> you know, it was so hard, they all had false teeth. Yeah, yeah, no no I never Keep forget my father said, stretch. give them wine so they don't dunk it. They do. <laughs> but I saved the model bread. And I got for, his bar mitzvah. So that was and I want you to know, four or five years died. earlier? Yeah. What's that? So this was left over from your yeah, mother? Yeah, your yeah, mother made it four or five it. years earlier? Yes. Marion put it in wax paper. Marion, I, I did. Well, I don't know who did it. Do you still have it? I was saving, was, I was was saving the model bread for his bar mitzvah. I thought you were going to use it for her wedding. <laughs> do you still have it? The yeah. <laughs> I got the wax. I hate the door so <laughs> Wait, it's right here. Well, anyhow, anyhow, my father taught me my bar mitzvah uh, brachas, and, and after that. What day were you bar mitzvah telling? I was on a, on a Thursday. No, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. <laughs> I remember the women came and threw the peanuts at me. Was that a tradition? Little bat, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's an, what they call an up yeah. right, Why do you think of what's this? The they still do that in Orthodox. Uh -huh. He didn't know his bar mitzvah thing too well. No, I did. Edie, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the significance of the peanuts? Uh huh? What's the significance of the peanuts? They it's just that that's what they put in there. Here they put candy and peanuts. Solo they, candy, raisins and nuts. Raisins, raisins and nuts. We couldn't afford candy. Well, as oh, they okay. get older, they put in candy uh, or sweet. So it's kind of like a gift. Uh, it's, they, it's a you, gift. They would tie sweet. it in a little bag, and when they, he would, they were all finished with the ceremony, the people that sit up, the late, old ladies that sit upstairs take it and they throw it at them. It's so supposed to be good luck for anybody. Yeah, that's supposed to be for a sweet life. Sweet, sweet life. Sweet life. That's a fact. Yeah. That's, they call it an offer. Milton must have taken it. I, I have to tell one market. story. I bought I all my dear wife back. It was Easter week. And I went to Harry Grossman, and I bought a green gabardine suit, a nice pair of bat, black patent leather shoes, a nice shirt and a tie. And I hung it up, and 
Louie and Jerry were in the house at that time. And I got up and I said, I went to the closet to get my suit. And it was gone. My shoes were gone. Everything was gone. And I said, Pop, where, where's it? He said, Louie looks so nice. <laughs> I, I let him wear it. <laughs> That's the way we live. Every, the first one I've got the best. <laughs> I'll never get that long. Absolutely. Early yeah. bird. Do you remember what was when it, a Ford? Yeah, yeah. Ford. A, a, a rumble seat. A, a, four, a, a model A model seat. A model seat. A rumble seat. And he borrowed it one day. He says to me, come on, I'll take you for a ride. And you have to hear this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
challah. It was Purim, Shush and Purim. Mm -hmm. She baked 13 challahs and the model bread and a lot of, and sponge cake. My mother was famous for baking and mm -hmm. cooking. I don't know whether it was true or not, but my father used to say that his mother had never slept in a bed when he went into the army. That is true. She slept on the floor. Yeah. She Why? said that, that if she Her son was up, suffering, and if, so if she If she should. suffered, my brother would come home from the army. I have the letter that... You ever read That's that letter? Interesting idea. That my father sent to her. She gave her. Uh, you I have think the letter, they're English. You? I think they call it. Like that, a you have the letter that that her that was sent to Herman from Pop. No. I have a copy of that. Was letter. she sick for a long time before she died? No. She had she diabetes. Was a diabetic. But she didn't really take care of herself. No, she used to take yeah, a she, Yeah, she had. She she had, had I know she had it. Oh yeah, but she took insulin. Doctor Car Doctor uh, Goodman. Goodman. Was it Doctor Goodman? Goodwin, you mean in Ellen? No, no, Dr. Goodwin was her law, her doctor. He had a, you know where Brown's uh, clothing store was? Yeah. There was a little, I, I there was steps. I recognize that name. Goodman was the... And there was Carsberg, too. Carsberg came later, but Goodwin was her doctor. Goodman. The other story, the other family mother. story, but it doesn't have anything to do with these guys. My father, when he went into the Army, he was at Fort Dix for a while, and then he went overseas, and he had a bunch of postcards in which he just put his name and address, his serial number and whatnot, addressed to my grandmother. And uh, he gave them to Uncle Jeff, all ready to mail. And Uncle Jeff was supposed to mail one a week so that my grandmother wouldn't know that he was overseas. Jeff got impatient. Made them all at one time. He mailed them all at once. He dumped them into the movie. And that was how my grandmother knew where he, that he wasn't at Fort Dix anymore. <laughs> my mother took that very hard. So did your father. He told me his stories. And then when, when Herman came home, Jerry got the cap. He wore that peak cap. Remember that? He wore that peak cap. Like Her a soldier hat. Herman gave him the peak hat. <laughs> you couldn't get rid of it. And somebody has a picture of him on a horse with me. Have you got that picture of me and the pony? Probably. And, uh, oh, yeah, I've seen but that. Jerry never could get, you couldn't get that hat away from Jerry no matter what. I got a funny story when you mentioned Jerry. But all my in brother, all, we grew up to be good citizens. My brother Jerry used to stutter. Yeah. And Milton used to tease the hell out of him. You're so my one, favorite brother, how could I not? <laughs> so one day, what does he do? He puts eggs on a chair and, he's, and he imitates my brother stuttering. He's going, K -k -k Katie. You remember that? This is the pause button. <laughs> yeah. And you say, you just, uh, yeah, I got something in my he's, irritating he's my eye. My brother is stuttering. Oh, how he used to tease him with that stuttering. Listen, it wasn't easy living with him, believe me. He would squeal on me no matter what. Between her, him and my sister Annette, I couldn't do anything wrong. How about when we used to it go to get, school? It would, it would get right back, I'm telling you, it would get right back to my father. You remember we used to holler scream the streets on fire? <laughs> we used to go around the corner to go but to school. I have school. to tell you we'd one story about, my, about We would leave together. We'd get about a half a block up, and he'd start yelling at me. He says, where are you going? He didn't even want to know where I was at tell anybody I was his sister. He said, walk on the other side of the street. You want to walk with me? My father used to give her your shray from all the way down <laughs> the street. He says, what's Wilson you? That was grammar school because I didn't go to the same school. I was, I was one, what was, one block away yeah. or in the middle of the block that went to a different school. Lord Sterling. No, no, you went Byer. to Lord I went to Byer. I went to Byer Street, too. So did I. I never went to Lord Stirling. That's why I tell you, you don't remember carrying my books. <laughs> <laughs> See? You, had, you had books in, in grammar school? Yes, yeah, sure what we did. Were you carrying your books? <laughs> sure did you know how to read? I'm telling you. Well, well next year we're going to have to get some more witnesses. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, she's a, she just doesn't want to admit it. Uh -huh. Really? Hey, Annette, tell us how about we used to sneak out of Hebrew school and go down to the basement? I, I remember that. Speaking of Hebrew school, tell them about the rabbi who gave you lessons. Yeah. Oh, Dardic. Dardic, yeah. He didn't give us lessons, he gave us clip. He 
took me. He used to take you know, me behind was? No. Bang. Yeah, right. but he also. With the ruler. But, but what with it, the girls, he used to run his hand up your dresses. Uh -huh. The rabbi molested me. It's not behind, just priests, is behind, it? Behind the blackboard. And so what'd you do? And so I went home and I told my father, and he gave me a zet. He says, you don't want to go to Hebrew, so you're, you're making up a story oh. about the rabbi. So I started crying and says, Papa, I'm telling you the truth. I says, ask Edie Schatzman. Her father took her out of the school. Mm -hmm. Her father believed her when she told him, but my father He didn't molest me, but he just used to, you know, run his hands up your skirt. You There's one story I must Wait. tell you. Well, it had to be around 10 or 8 years old. And, and your uh, story was about 12. my niece Myra. My niece, Myra, in high school, only wanted to go to the dance, to the senior <laughs> dance with me. Prom. That was on a, no, it wasn't a prom, it was a dance on a, Saturday, on a Friday night. And she was the same age as you, right? Yeah, six months younger. She's I said, okay, like Myra. a month younger so than me. So we went to this dance, mm -hmm. and I danced. We had a wonderful time. Her birthday was November. And on the way back, everybody used to stop at the Fifth Avenue Sweet uh, Shop. Shop. And I said to Myra, listen, I have 40 cents. <laughs> We have a nickel for the bus. You'll come, you'll have an ice cream soda, which is 10 cents. And I'll have an ice cream soda, 10 cents. And I'll leave the waitress a nickel tip, and we'll be able to get home on the bus. Uncle Milk, fine. We get into, we get into the Fifth Avenue sweet shop. We sit in the booth. The waitress come over. And I said, Mary, what would you like to have? She said, I'll have a banana. Bananas with <laughs> 35 cents. <laughs> the girl said, what do you want? I said, I'm not having anything. <laughs> I walked home. <laughs> you remember that one? Uh, I'll tell, well, I'll there tell was, you. Uh, on the block street that we lived, there was a little grocery store. And you know how they have stands where they put uh, fruits and vegetables out? Well, when, on a Sunday when they weren't open, we would, the girls on the block would all go over and he would teach us how to dance. He would come and teach us one by one, Bertie Lai. He was, he was popular, I have to say that. I want to ask a question about the, um, the rabbi Bruce, that was molesting young girls. Pain in the neck, young <laughs> girls. Okay. Oh, so my Did father he? finally took yeah. me out of the, there and he, I went to uh, Hebrew school at the, uh, uh, the workman circle. Workman's did, any, did anybody ever um, confront this rabbi? No. 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 Are you kidding? In those years, nobody would believe you. Even now, my own Even father now. didn't believe me. So. so, 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 do you know other kids that he molested, or did you not? I, talk I, I don't him? know. I didn't. Wasn't molested. He yeah. just had wandering hands, as far as I was concerned. Which was inappropriate behavior. Of course. <laughs> he did his hands Still molesting. Why, if yeah. you ever, no, if you ever told anybody that's what Mr. Daughter did, they wouldn't believe you. Yeah. As, matter to he had three children as matter of fact, I think his, some, one of his family is friendly with Jill. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Dad, In fact, one of the... you remember when we met him at Yankee Stadium? Yeah, sure. Oh, the God. rabbi? Yeah, he took a class. <laughs> He took a class, a uh, Hebrew class, to a ball game. Mm -hmm. And Bruce and I and mother and a few of the others were there. And I hear him hit the, and I said... My father hears them screaming and yelling. He I slaps said, some kid. He says, I know that voice anywhere. That's dark. That's my rabbi. I said, Dad, come on. We're in Yankee <laughs> Stadium. How could it be your rabbi? <laughs> we turned around and he walked up. He said, Rabbi? Mutty? Yeah, that's right. Mutty. A actually, he wasn't a rabbi. He was just a Hebrew he was teacher. teacher. His, his me, they used to call him Beans. My father. That's yeah. right. You know how it came about? No. no. My grandmother had a grocery store. That's right. On Hiram Street. Right. And 56, that was the other box that I was thinking 56 of. 56 mm -hmm. That was the other box. It was called Beblach. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother used to give me a penny for a cake to go back to school. and. I, for lunch, she'd give me the ends of the salami. Well, you know, so on the way back, on the way home, on the way to school, I would take a little brown bag and fill it up with beblach. And, and one day, I ate a few beblach, and I left it in the desk, and it was in the summertime, and it stunk like hell. And the, the teacher the next day said, who brought beblach in there? Well, this guy by the name of Abe, Grive, Abe uh, Garvis raised his hand, he said, Monty Levine. <laughs> And they call me beans from that on in. So what is, 
Bedrach. Little beans. 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 Bedrach is a Jewish uh, name for beans. Beans. But yeah. what, uh, what do they call like, it now? Uh, kasha or? Chip beans. Uh -huh. Oh, Chick chickpeas. 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 Uh -huh. That's what they used to serve in the shul too, uh -huh. the chickpeas. Huh. I'll tell you, it was, it was a great life. It wasn't so great well. Ed, we did you tell that. the story about when you got thrown out of school and you were supposed to bring your father to school? Yes, yes. for Uncle Louie. I just got, yeah. that I was told the him time. that. Uncle, Uncle Johnny Lines, I brought the first time. Yeah. Did you tell that story? <laughs> no. Tell that story, that's a very funny story. I got expelled. I, there was a little teacher by the name of Ozenbaum. You remember Ozenbaum? Yeah. She was about as big as Evie. And she was always pushing me around. So one day I picked her up and I put her on a desk. I said, you can't do that to me. She said, you're expelled. It's OK. <laughs> so I left the high school and I walked down. Now, if I told my father I was expelled, I'd get it all the way back. So we had a little speakeasy next to where we lived. And Johnny Lines was the owner. I said, Johnny, I'm in Agnes trouble. Is, that was Agnes Would you like brother. to come up to high school and act as my brother? Oh, he said, sure, I'll do that. So we walked up to high school. We get it to Carlson. Was it Carlson? Yeah, yes. yeah. Carlson said that to John, he said, that. I said, I want you to meet my brother Dave. <laughs> so he said, yes, Dave. He said, you know, your, bro your, your brother Milton has been very bad what he did, and I want him to apologize. And I said, well, I will. And in walks Mrs. Bogan. Remember May Bogan? She, walked, she was the oldest teacher in the school. She walked around, she said, Hey, Johnny Lyons, you, look, you have an agent. <laughs> and I got cut from my father. So how did the Levine family circle start? Well, I'll tell you how it started. My father decided that we were going to have a Froma and Wolf Levine Foundation. We met at the Woodrow Wilson Hotel, which was that time was the only hotel in the city of New Brunswick. And we invited Aunt Ida, Aunt Rose, Aunt Jenny, That's Uncle his, Max, his father's sisters, and uh, brother, and Abram, Abram Levine, and they all came, and they, my father sat at the head of the table, and all of the children were sat at the back with the other children were there, and my father being the oldest, he said, I think we ought to call it the Wolf and Froma. Levine Foundation. That was his father and mother. Right. Yeah. So they were. They, he was the father and mother of all that they were sitting at that table. So Max Levine got up and he said, "Well, my name is not Levine. My name is Mark Lewine. Capital W E, capital W I N E, uh, uh, capital L E, capital W I L E, Lee Wine." The other uncle got up and he said, "My name is Levin, L E V I N." So he took a vote. And my family won. So we decided the next week, the next month, we'll have a meeting and all come on. The next meeting, nobody showed up but us. So we've called it at that time the Benjamin Esther Levine Foundation. And that's how it was born. Mm -hmm. And then how did you start? Did you meet every Sunday? Remember, it used to meet no, every we used to meet once, once a month. A month. The first Sunday of the month. First Sunday of the right. month, and then it would rotate people's Eddie, houses. Every, every child had a, a chance. And every child had to become the president. Uh huh. And who was the first president? Herman J. Okay. And and then. Um, then Uncle Jeff. Okay. And then talk about like what did you talk about at these meetings? Well, we talked about help in the family. We had an aunt Ida, who at that time was very poor, and. What are you looking for? Aunt Ida was poor. You don't she remember, had a pants you don't factory. Remember, that was late. That was before. You don't remember when Uncle Louie and Jerry and me used to bring canned goods and that stuff? That was after. That was that not. That was after her husband died. That, well, that, I'm talking about <laughs> after the uh, Levine Foundation. <laughs> I'm talking about after the Levine Foundation. We took the She lived on Ocean Avenue. We uh -huh. took it to Brooklyn. And her husband didn't die. Her husband fell in love with one of the secretaries of his office, and they were separated. Do you remember that? No. Well, you don't remember that. That's they were separated, and she, <laughs> and she went to live with a daughter of hers, Lillian, Lillian. who was. Uh, they lived on Ocean Avenue, and they didn't. Nathan did not support him. His name was Nathan Lipschitz. Never supported. Him. There was a son, Dave, Dave. Lippy. He changed his name to Lippy, 
and he went to work for my brother Jeff mm -hmm. as a bookmaker. Mm -hmm. And we you used to bring to groceries. You don't there, do you? What? <laughs> he was a bookmaker. Everybody knows. He was a bookmaker. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> nothing to hide. Everybody knows. You want to hide that your, your brother was a gambler? You want to hide that? I'm going to hide it. You tell the truth. Shall I tell the truth that you were a pain in the neck? That's true. <laughs> That's that your truth. But, but that I we used to bring Except groceries. Tell him, tell him about when I got married. That was just a minute. Let me finish my story. <laughs> and that was the, the foundation boys. of and the, the Levine Foundation. Uh -huh. We could help each Jewish other. Mafia. Mm -hmm. Jeff worked for them. And that was the beginning. They worked in Las Vegas. When, when every, any of the boys the went to college yeah. or anybody needed help, part of the family would help the other part of the family. Am I right or wrong? Anything you say is no, no. right Why don't you say About what? Helping each other in the family. Oh, yeah, was I, there that anybody, part I don't know. There, I wasn't you, in the family then. Oh, you were married to my brother Louie, weren't you? Not then. I didn't get married till 43. But did you ever see my brother Louie refuse anybody no in help? No way. Never. My brother Louie was the kindest person you ever met in your life. He would do without anything to help somebody else. And he used to go every Sunday, uh, every once uh, a month on Sunday, and we would go to Ann Ida and give her very uh, stuff to live with. Did you loan each other money? What? Did you loan each other money? When, when, it you got know, to be a sore subject. That's, that's, got got to be a sore that's subject. another story. It got to be a sore subject, because yeah. I'm pretty sure that my father lent some people money. And uh, it was never repaid. That's Not correct. only wasn't it ever repaid, but he resented the fact that some of those members of those family had diamond rings. Mm -hmm. That's right. And my mother never had a diamond, you know. It was, so, that's a very touchy So you show. think that the, da the, da the daddy Bob. rode the trust in the family over the years? That sort of Not really. People I mean, the family ties were much too strong, as, uh -huh. you know. No, that didn't stop. Yeah. There were many times when people needed money, would go to the family, mm -hmm. and uh, if they had it, they gave it to them. But a lot of them were not paid back, mm -hmm. and a lot of them were given security where they never got their security back. Mm -hmm. But that is a different story altogether. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, in those days, nobody had any money except Aunt Bessie. That's your father. My father, father. My father's... father was making five thousand dollars a year. He never made five thousand. That's right. Most of his life, his children got free scholarships because they were deserving of it. And he worked. He dedicated his father, life. He dedicated his life to the Jewish farmer. Now he was you lucky. You read his book. He I got ranch. his book home. Did you ever read Herman's book? No, no, would, would no you did. No, you didn't. Say I did. you I, I my father I never made ready. more than 3,600. Yeah. But my husband no, keeps telling me how lucky he was because in his job, yeah. he got the house. So he didn't have any rent and he got the car. Right. So, you know, even though he didn't have very much money. What job was that? He was very well respected. And he worked what, for that's the... That's what your father's life was all about. The Jewish Agricultural yeah, I Society. Right. I wanted to sit so His life was very... Herman was a very well respected and helped everybody. Oh, yeah. And that, I'll tell you what a rotten kid he was. When I met my husband... She only talks about me. When I, was I met the world's my husband... Worst. I went, I went back and I was telling my father, I met my husband and so forth. He said to me, don't lie to me. He was a tight so I, salesman. I said to him, working on Broadway, hustling I, I said to him, what do you mean lie to you? I'm telling you the truth. Mutti Nook is up. Mutti told me he sells ties on Broadway, which was not true. <laughs> my husband was a, a clothing salesman. So my father said, what are you doing with a, a, a man on Broadway selling pot and ties? That's what he told my father. I think that's enough from us. I'm getting tired <laughs> sitting right. on this seat. Yeah, these chairs are kind of hard. Okay, okay. thank you very well, much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Arjan, up for bat. Arjan's here with Megan Levine. Oh, base hit. All right, Arjan. Go. There goes Max into home. Joey. Oh. One out.
Well, you're on the other team. That's a great call. I did the best I could do. Let go get my 10 bucks. Okay, one of the Schlosser descendants. Up at bat. All right, one nothing, one out. We need a third base. One nothing, one out. One Good hitter out. here. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, hey. Come on in. Come on in. There it is. Hey, you got Ribby out of it. Good hit. And Arjan makes it home. Okay, nice hit. Little Levine pitching. Now you you got you left to it. Two nothing. Nothing. Nothing is the score. David, host of the party, is up at bat. And nice hit. Third baseman. First base. Okay. Aaron Berman looks like coming up. All right, good hit. Oh, double play. Same size. First half of the first inning. Finish. Berman Brothers moving off the field. July to December team, now up at bat. Oh, Sophie. How many you score? Two. Oh, yeah, who's in July? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, Sophie's in May. She's on this team. On July 8th. Well, let's you Sophie's in May. Okay, then you get to go back first. Okay. 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 David King, pitching. <laughs> Practice pitches coming in here. And let's see what's happening with Sophie here. Okay, Sophie made it to first base. Okay, ready? Are they ready? Nice step. Lou Levine. Battery is too low. Okay.